Have you ever touched the clouds or took a dip in a pool in the middle of the desert? From driving into the clouds all the way down to a desert of salt. This is Badr al Shoaib and you are watching. Good morning from Ethiopia, specifically in the north, uh, in a city called Mikeli. It's close to the borders of Eritrea. Today we're gonna go on a three-day trip and it's called the Dankal Depression. According to Google reviews and the articles, they say it's the most dangerous and hottest place in Africa or the world. But I'm not sure about that. I'm doubting. <laughs> Probably it was dangerous back w during the wartime uh, and like preceding the wartime since it's uh, bordering Eritrea because some of the reviews say that people uh, got kidnapped, uh, others got shot at, and others got lost, <laughs> making it the most dangerous place. And then the hottest is because you go down below sea level to uh, a salt lake, but it's, it's called also called Lake Asal, but it's not the same one as in Djibouti, and it's not as low as the one in Djibouti. So I don't know how it's the hottest place. And when I was in Djibouti, it wasn't that hot when I went to Lake Asal. Probably because it's winter. <laughs> the next day, which is more interesting, because we're gonna be trekking a volcano an active volcano and then we're gonna spend the night on top of that active volcano now that's a journey i've been waiting for for a long time let's see how that goes stay tuned <laughs> his, his name is mamu he's gonna be our uh, driver <laughs> This is unexpected. So we were driving up the mountains and then there was like, today it's cloudy. And we drove into the clouds, which is something I've always wanted to do. here uh, we made a stop this is the rift valley this is the start of the rift valley and it's a chain of mountains that go all the way across africa and part of that chain is uh, mount kilimanjaro and some other mountains and uh, lake victoria and so on so it starts here in ethiopia where, where is it <laughs> is it still okay it just fell okay i didn't see it did it come back so i don't know how many degrees it is right now but it is hot but it's like 3 p.m and we're still not even at the location we're still above sea level so i don't know but still i mean like in kuwait it gets this hot and it even gets worse so i don't know we'll see we'll see we'll see so we've just reached the campsite where we'll be spending the night and okay so mm, weather wise it's it is hot like you can see the sun even with the like cloudy today but when the sun comes out it's hot but still i don't believe it's as hot as it is back home when it's summertime uh but then the difference is we have at least uh, air conditions here like we're gonna be sleeping in these wooden huts or something like that so the local people who live here i mean how do they survive the summer heat and even like now it's winter and it's, it is hot without ac or anything else i mean i don't know yeah that's hard to survive the only good thing that these things could provide is good shade away from the sun and the heat but i don't think there's anything that could provide them with cold air so shade is good but come summertime i don't want to be here these are going to be our beds and we're going to be sleeping outside I don't know what the temperature is, let me ask him 
Yeah. So they're saying it's about 35, 56 degrees. So we are at the, at the northern extremity. This is Ethiopia, this is the borders, the borders, and this is the area. And we are where? Uh, yeah. We just arrived to uh, this area, it's called Asal, it's not like Asal yet uh, because there's no lake obviously, <laughs> so but there's like salt all over the place, you can see it's all white. <sighs> and then and then over there it's uh, all salt mining, so let's go and see. It's different, see, so I'm glad because it's different than the one I saw in uh, Djibouti. Like a sound Djibouti is a little bit different. This one's like a big, massive land, just salt. As you can see here, so there's like, this is like on top because it's like dirty from weather or whatever it is. But like if you go underneath it, it's like fresh salt, it's fresh white salt. Anyway, we can see uh, some of the locals mining salt. So they dig out the salt and then they carve it into blocks and stack them. You can see all those blocks that they've already done. There is like vast amount of just salt blocks all over there. So after they uh, mine them and uh, make the bricks, donkey caravans come and pick them up, sometimes camels. So they're gonna like carry them and uh, for storage and transport and export and all that trade stuff. Hello, donkey. Hello. <laughs> so here we have a small, I don't know, it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, it's, okay, let's try. That's one. And it's deep. How deep is it? And then like you can, there's more inside. Yes, Good. That's cool. See, I'm floating like all the way here. I can't, I'm not moving my legs. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go up this mountain to see the view from the top. Let's go! How's the view from the top? to another spot so we arrived late afternoon which now is cooler and there's wind so yeah there is no heat at all uh, as I said so in the summer season it's the one when it's hottest and apparently it reaches 50 degrees but still I believe that my country is in the summer <laughs> it gets way way hotter and since this is a touristic attraction and people like to come here because of the well, of course not because of the heat, <laughs> but, but people do come and do experience the heat. So I'm thinking of making a, a tour in my country since we like tourism and take people uh, deep into the desert on camels during summer so they can experience the real heat. <laughs> what do you think of that? Let me know.
So we arrived at Lake Asal, the Ethiopian one. It's so much different, so much work coming for. Look at all of that, just flats and flats of salt all over the place. And so this is the salt, of course. <laughs> Here is the lake. Here we have shallow area where you can take with, uh, collections, right? And then there, <laughs> the actual lake is right over there. I mean, you get the idea. During the trip, you get escorted with a local carrying a weapon for protection. Even though there is no more conflict between Eritrea and Ethiopia, but they still pay for protection just in case anything happens, and also to provide jobs for locals. Good man. So right now we're in base camp, spending the night out in the open. It is uh, very windy. <laughs> Not cold, but it's windy. Uh, I'm gonna be wearing like a uh, shirt, t-shirt. Uh, yeah, so we're provided with the beds and everything. Uh, but the only one problem is, when I went to them and I asked him like, hey, where is the toilet? <laughs> and then the, the guy was, he pointed to the desert, he's like, go far over there. <laughs> There's toilets. So I'm like, okay. And then, yeah, so that's uh, one thing. Because we have like a lot of the females with us. So I don't think it's like an easy thing. There is no toilet anywhere. And, this, and we're like in a local village. So yeah, apparently the, their toilet is just the open desert. That's all for day one. Stay tuned for part two. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share.